Action abroad. The rules that apply to your action at home must apply to your action everywhere. Never forget for an instant that this is a perfect world and that you are a god among gods. You are as great as the greatest, but all are your equals. Rely absolutely on your perception of truth. Trust to the inner light rather than to reason, but be sure that your perception comes from the inner light. Act in poise and calmness. Be still and attend on God. Your identification of yourself with the All Mind will give you all the knowledge you need for guidance in any contingency that may arise in your own life or in the lives of the others. It is only necessary that you should be supremely calm and rely upon the eternal wisdom that is within you. If you act in poise and faith, your judgment will always be right, and you will always know exactly what to do. Do not hurry or worry. Remember Lincoln in the dark days of the war. James Freeman Clark relates that after the Battle of Fredericksburg, Lincoln alone furnished a supply of faith and hope for the nation. Hundreds of leading men from all parts of the country went sadly into his room and came out cheerful and hopeful. They had stood face to face with the highest and had seen God in this lank, ungainly, patient man, although they knew it not. Have perfect faith in yourself and in your own ability to cope with any combination of circumstances that may arise. Do not be disturbed if you are alone. If you need friends, they will be brought to you at the right time. Do not be disturbed if you feel that you are ignorant. The information that you need will be furnished you when it is time for you to have it. That which is in you impelling you forward is in the things and people you need, impelling them toward you. If there is a particular man you need to know, he will be introduced to you. If there is a particular book you need to read, it will be placed in your hands at the right time. All the knowledge you need is coming to you from both external and internal sources. Your information and your talents will always be equal to the requirements of the occasion. Remember that Jesus told his disciples not to worry as to what they should say when brought before the judges. He knew that the power in them would be sufficient for the needs of the hour. As soon as you awaken and begin to use your faculties in a great way, you will apply power to the development of your brain. New cells will be created, and dormant cells quickened into activity, and your brain will be qualified as a perfect instrument for your mind. Do not try to do great things until you are ready to go about them in a great way. If you undertake to deal with great matters in a small way, that is, from a low viewpoint, or with incomplete consecration and wavering faith and courage, you will fail. Do not be in a hurry to get to the great things. Doing great things will not make you great, but becoming great will certainly lead you to the doing of great things. Begin to be great where you are, and in the things you do every day. Do not be in haste to be found out or recognized as a great personality. Do not be disappointed if men do not nominate you for office within a month after you begin to practice what you read in this book. Great people never seek for recognition or applause. They are not great because they want to be paid for being so. Greatness is reward enough for itself. The joy of being something and of knowing that you are advancing is the greatest of all joys possible to man. If you begin in your own family, as described in the preceding chapter, and then assume the same mental attitude with your neighbors, friends, and those you meet in business, you will soon find that people are beginning to depend on you. Your advice will be sought, and a constantly increasing number of people will look to you for strength and inspiration, and rely upon your judgment. Here, as in the home, you must avoid meddling with other people's affairs. Help all who come to you but do not go about officiously endeavoring to set other people right. Mind your own business. It is no part of your mission in life to correct people's morals, habits or practices. Lead a great life, doing all things with a great spirit and in a great way. Give to him that asks of you, as freely as you have received, but do not force your help or your opinions upon any man. If your neighbor wishes to smoke or drink, it is his business. It is none of yours until he consults you about it. If you lead a great life and do no preaching, you will save a thousand times as many souls as one who leads a small life and preaches continuously. If you hold the right viewpoint of the world, others will find it out.
and be impressed by it through your daily conversation and practice. Do not try to convert others to your point of view, except by holding it and living accordingly. If your consecration is perfect, you do not need to tell anyone. It will speedily become apparent to all that you are guided by a higher principle than the average man or woman. If your identification with God is complete, you do not need to explain the fact to others. It will become self-evident. To become known as a great personality, you have nothing to do but to live. Do not imagine that you must go charging about the world like Don Quixote, tilting at windmills, and overturning things in general, in order to demonstrate that you are somebody. Do not go hunting for big things to do. Live a great life where you are, and in the daily work you have to do, and greater works will surely find you out. Big things will come to you. speak it. Meet men and women of both low and high estates as a god meets other divine beings. Begin thus and continue thus, and your unfolding in ability and power will be great and rapid.